Welcome back. You're watching KTN Primetime News. Between January 1st this year and the 31st of December, Kenya lost 32,987 people to cancer. Out of this number, women comprise the highest victims at slightly over 18,700, mainly killed due to the prevalence of breast cancer. It is the worrying statistics compiled by the International Agency for Research on Cancer, Globocan, that has irked the most unlikely of people. Two young ladies, one of them just 16 years old, both cancer-free but affected by the scourge. They are both taking up action this festive season to ensure more lives are preserved through early diagnosis and proper treatment. But it's not what they are doing that will shock you. It's how they are doing it. Here's Katie and Timothy Otieno with tonight's special report, Cuts for Cure. The story of two young ladies. Mwangari Mathai talked about this story for the hummingbird. Kido kidogo in a kibaba. If I did something and pushed people on my end to declare cancer a national disaster and someone else did the same thing and someone else did the same thing, I think the government would hear our cry. No regret at all because I'm helping someone else, but I'm definitely nervous <laughs> because I don't know how it will plan out really, but definitely happy to do it. <laughs> A tale that both shocked and inspired those around them. And the reaction from me was, pardon? Say that again. First of all, I was called an attention seeker. Yes, I was called an attention seeker, I remember. Digital marketer Njeri Mudaka and high school student Sophie Shaw are of two opposite worlds. They don't know each other. In fact, they'll probably hear of each other through this special report. But unbeknownst to them is that their lives really are perhaps more of a reflection of each other than they may be aware of. Right. So Sophie's story begins late one evening at her home in Karen. It's a typical family evening. Mother, Sally Shaw, is preparing a meal for her son and her husband, Mr. Graham Shaw. Like she's always done many nights before this one, Sally procures the help of her daughter, Sophie Shaw. Her Did you do it's that? a picture-perfect setting that is soon interrupted by the presence of Mama Ida Odinga. She is here because Sophie is about to do the unthinkable for a girl her age, and Ida is willing to support. I've never met a young girl who thinks the way Sophie thinks. Every young girl would like to look beautiful, like to keep her hair and look, like to show around. And if you look at her hair, it is quite a nice bunch of hair. Two months prior, Sophie announced to her parents that she wanted to shave her head bald and raise funds in support of cancer victims. And so you decide to shave. Who is the first person you tell? That was my father <laughs> and my mum, definitely, yes. And how did they react to that news? They were very shocked. They were very surprised that I was willing to do something like that. Mm. Mm -hmm. Who was most opposed <laughs> to that? Was it your dad or your mom? I think it was my dad. And the reaction from me was, pardon? Say that again? She said, I'm going to shave my head. I said, well, you can't. You look like me. Um, she said, no, I'm going to do it. Did you try to convince her otherwise? No. No. Why? It's because I, Sophie, when she sets her mind to something, I know she will go through with it. She's quite, quite determined, surprisingly for such a, a slight girl. No, she's very determined. So determined is Sophie that not even talks by Ida Odinga herself would convince her otherwise. And there's a reason for her determination. Many years back, Sophie's father was diagnosed with testicular cancer. Sophie's grandmother has also ailed from the disease. It's on that backdrop that Sophie believes she can do more than just watch people suffer from cancer. I would hope to get more people to contact me to kind of do something similar to do with charity work and raising money for someone else to help someone else. It's a chilly Tuesday morning, about a week after we first met Sophie. 
the students at Hillcrest Academy, where Sophie studies, are heading out for the morning assembly, a ritual here that's about to take a new twist. Many of them don't know that Sophie, who now looks a bit nervous, is going to shave her head bald in front of all of them. Parents are usually not allowed to attend school assemblies, but today the shows are an exception. Before long, the process begins. A stern silence grips the hall when the barber goes for Sophie's nicely braided ponytail. Although on occasion, sprouts of applause emerge from her fellow students. <laughs> Within no time, Sophie's long healthy hair has gone. Quite remarkable, considering just a few days earlier, Sophie's mother, Sally, had told us this about her daughter's love for her hair. She loves her hair. She has so many hair products. For the last couple of years, she, she spends so much time researching how to make her hair look good. It, she's very proud of her, her hair. Um, it's a brave thing to do. And there's the evidence. <laughs> so there we go. What's your reaction? Yeah. Just proud of myself almost and happy that I can help someone. Very happy. Aside from the haircut, Sophie has opened an online GoFundMe account targeting about 25,000 Kenya shillings. It's a realization of a statement of intent meant to create awareness and exposure on the plight of cancer patients who often lose their hair due to effects of chemotherapy. The events of what took place here may have lasted just mere minutes. But for young Sophie Shaw, she's hoping the impact of today's activities will last a lifetime for a generation of young Kenyans not only speaking about cancer, but actively doing something about it. <sighs> oh my God! It's a vision that was becoming a reality for a young lady miles away in Roisambu. Jerry Mudaka's medium of communication for that statement was Facebook Live. So if you want your hair done very well. She also shaved her head bald to create awareness about the disease. But I'll tell you what, after I shaved my hair, I thought to my head, oh, what did I just do? What did I just do? You know, because I had not seen some corners of my head. Eh? <laughs> Apparently I have a forehead, I didn't know. It runs in my family. And my mom, my mom is on Facebook. At that time she was not on Facebook, now she is. Because she was called by someone's, someone's friend and she was told, hey, your daughter was on Facebook and she's trending. She shaved her hair. So she called me, she's like, eh, hey, you send me a picture? This is sarcastically, eh? So what's the point? <laughs> you know, what's the point? I told her, oh, mom, so I have this initiative. I'm supporting cancer patients. You wouldn't have talked about it. I'm going ahead and shaving your hair. Unlike Sophie, who opened a GoFundMe account, Jerry used the buzz created by her Facebook Live shave to push for the sale of this book written in her honor and to which funds raised from its sale go to payment of chemotherapy sessions for those affected. First of all, I was called an attention seeker. Yes, I was called an attention seeker, I remember, because uh, I announced on Facebook Live that I was going to go shave my hair and I'll tell you guys why. So when I was still doing it, someone just commented down there, it's just attention seeking. What's it all about? But the guy actually came to apologize afterwards. He actually came and bought the book and said, you know what, I didn't know what you were doing, I just thought you were just attention seeking. Njeri was able to raise enough funds to pay for eight cancer patients, a total of 10 chemotherapy sessions. 18! 19! <laughs> Two weeks after her head shave, Sophie sits quietly at the Kenyatta National Hospital's third floor where more than 50 children diagnosed and seeking treatment for cancer are having their annual Christmas party. Sophie's face tells it all. She may not directly know it, but she understands the pain and suffering associated with the disease and especially at such a young age. On this day, 
Sophie has held hands with the Faraja Center Support Trust to donate 300,000 out of the 500,000 Kenya shillings that she raised through her GoFundMe account. Money that will be now used to get these children the treatment they so much deserve. It's also really amazing to see young people doing this because I think most of us have time to do these things when we are at the end of our career or when we are old and there's nothing more exciting to do. But for her to do this at the age of 16 or 17, it's just amazing. Another 200,000 Kenya shillings she donates to the Friends of the Dagoretti Children's Home, a center that supports needy children by taking them through school. 54 of arguably the most underprivileged children are enrolled here. It's very, very harboring to see someone like Sophie at her age thinking of helping another needy child. So for us, it means a lot, and we are so grateful. Like this is my book on cancer awareness. Cancer awareness. Cancer awareness. Cancer awareness. So this holiday, please mm -hmm. go get checked. Mm -hmm. Please, please go get checked. Mm -hmm. for Meanwhile, men. Jerry Mudaka still distributes the books authored by Emily Mukomunene, retailing at 500 Kenya shillings each to raise more funds for cancer victims. We've been checked. Ever, ever gone for checkup? Yes, I've gone for cervical, um, uh, breast cancer and uh, cervical. When? Yes. Kitambo? Yes. Yes. Nice. I'll speak in English because Mimi and Adria Sahili Kidogo. But um, I'm here because I raised money to shave my head and I donated my hair to making wigs for cancer patients. So I just wish you all a very yeah, happy coffee. Christmas. <laughs> it's the efforts of two young ladies seeking to make a difference in the lives of others affected by a scourge that sees nearly 50,000 new cancer cases every year in Kenya. It's mainly helping other people and inspiring other people to make a change as well, because I think a lot of people can make a massive change. So if it inspires other people, that was my main aim. If a 16-year-old girl can support the children's home, I'll put my money there. I'll support her all the way in what she's doing. We are going to discuss with her and whatever support she needs, I'll be able to offer her that support. And I think she's grown to understand that, that life is more than just about privileges. It's not about money, it's about happiness. <clears throat> and if she can make some underprivileged children happy, I'm right behind her. And I think that's why Auntie Ida as well is, is behind her. Um, it's a pretty rare, it's a pretty rare Feet. I wish I could challenge everyone to take up something at least one time in their year, one time in every year, just do one thing. Even if it's visiting a children's home, feeding a family, taking in a family into your home, a homeless family into your home, paying school fees for someone who, who is not okay. Yeah. <laughs>